morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Friday. Yes, yes, and double yes. I'm excited. I'm I can't I always love Fridays, not because I'm ready for the week to be over. I, I no longer push time to hurry up and end. We don't do that. We're excited about what he has given us. But you know, it's just like, okay, what's about to happen, Lord? So good morning, everybody. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As you guys come on, do like and share. Do go ahead and like and share. Yes, I'm excited. I'm sitting up here and I'm thinking, I'm like, Lord, what's, what, what is in store for us today? You know, I'm not thinking even about the weekend. It's about what's happening today. So he has given me a whole word. So I'm excited to share it with you guys this morning. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, thank you, Michelle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning, mom. Good morning, good morning. So guys, before I jump into it, good morning, Linda. I wanted to let you guys see um, and ask you to support my sister's um, new business, Tiffany Cus Tiffany's Custom Tea. So this is one of her Black History shirts. Yes, unapologetically Black. I'll be rocking them. You know, of course, I'm going to be supporting quite a few people over the next month um, and um, beyond the month. You know, I always wear other um, people's items and support business because um, I need support in my small business. So, and, and I, I want to support black business for certain. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Simona. Good morning, good morning to you and Anthony. I don't know where Anthony is, but good morning, good morning. Hey, good morning, princess. I'm glad you guys are on Traveling Grace and Mercy to my friends, my friends, my friends, um, also to the Rose. So I'm praying for them this morning. So let's just jump in. So our topic this morning is the antidote. Now, I know you're probably saying that somebody's sick, somebody got poison, what's going on? But, you know, I I'm going to bring us to the antidote in a second. So as we are, when we wake up each and every day, we are, cho we are faced to make choices, decisions. We got to decide if we're going to go left or if we're going to go right. We got all kinds of things that are going on. Some decisions are very easy decisions for us to make, but some of us are in places where every day, some of us are like, I don't even feel like getting up out of bed, which is a tough place to be because if he's giving us life, we need to wake up. We need to be able to get up, jump up and move. But we're in places where we're like, okay, I have to decide. And, and these are some major decisions. Some of them deal with relationships, jobs, children, you know, finances, you got to decide, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to do this? Or am I going to do that? And when we when it comes down to it, you know, we make our decisions based on the amount of wisdom that is imparted in us, some of us. Now, some of us make the decision on based on how we feel. We get in our flesh and we're like, okay, this feels good, Lord. I know it ain't right, but I'm gonna just go over here and I'm gonna do what I need to do anyway. But we have at this point in time in our lives, we have to be much more intentional about how we're making decisions. Yes, major decisions, how we're making choices, because our decisions don't just impact us. They have an impact on our children, our future generations like they have major impacts. I can sit here and think about, you know, the decisions that my grandmother made, my great grandmother made are impacting me today in this life. So, you know, as we think about it, it's like, dang, I got to be a lot more intentional because I don't want anything that I do that's a bad choice to impact future generations that are not even here. They're already, you know, like, no, I don't want to stack the deck against them. I want to be able to remove some barriers. I want things to be able to look different for them. So in our decisions, are we employing adequate wisdom? And with that, I have to ask, who are you seeking wisdom from? Are you leaning to God? Are you praying? Or are you asking Tom, Dick, and Harry? And you know, I would hear people say, um, when we would talk about our business sometimes, and um, they would say, well, I got to go ask my uncle. And it's like, well, why are you going to go ask broke Uncle Joe, who ain't never have a business, whether or not you should start your own business? It's, it's like almost it doesn't make sense. Why would I go ask somebody who has no experience in this area when I can ask he who has all sufficiency, he who is all knowing, when I can go directly to him, I got a direct line. So, you know, when I thought about that thing, I was like, hmm. And when we make choices, we either succeed or we fail in our choices. So it's either we make the right choice or we don't. And the thing about it is, if the choice, if the decision that we make is outside of his will, simply put, we fail. 
but guess what the beauty about that is even he already knows what we're gonna do he knows us he knows the hairs on our head and i'm so grateful and thankful for that because there are some times that I failed miserably when God put the decisions, the options right in front of me. And I still chose that less, the, the, the option that was, um, would give me the lesser amount of pain right then and there. Because, you know, sometimes we're sitting and we're looking and we call ourselves weighing the pros and cons of a situation, but we're really not um, weighing the pros and cons. What we're doing is we're weighing to see which decision Hey, baby, we're weighing to see which decision is going to be the easiest for us. So I want us to think about that because our decisions impact everybody around us and it's either God's way or the wrong way. So, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to ever give the devil any kind of credit, but he will give us fresh grace and mercy. And when we look at everything that's placed in front of us, you know, I can think of some some great examples because what, what you have to have is it's an exercise and a test of your faith. So when we're looking like, what's, where's the antidote? You know, I'm looking, he's looking to see, you know, what's your faith looking like in this season, in this situation with this thing? Because you are going to be tempted and you're not the only one that's going to be tempted because we love certain stuff. I'll tell you there are certain things that I love to do. One of them is eat. So um, when we were going through our fast, you know, I was like, God, you know, I saw every dessert and I'm a sugar sweet person. I saw every dessert that I wanted to eat during those 21 days, but I had to have faith. I had to have strength and, and be able to say, you know what? I know I'm not supposed to do that. This is what I, I pushed away from that. So I won't do it. There are some of us who are making choices and we're putting things and situations and stuff before him. So I want us to do some self-reflection. I want us to really think about our choices. When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing on your mind? Is it giving thanks to him? Is it going into your um, prayer time, your, your quiet time and thanking God? When you make decisions, do you seek his counsel or do you say, hey, this is what I feel like doing. This will make me happy. This is what I'm going to do. No matter what it looks like, no matter what God is saying, because when we put stuff and things and people before him, then we're not making the right choices. That's not his will. He is not saying your job before me. He is not saying anything before me it has to be an alignment it had you know oh my god thank you holy spirit for that because alignment is my word for the year it's our word in this house for the year what is it that you're doing think about it because we all have choices every day and our choices have consequences attached to them are you doing what you're supposed to do are you keeping the main thing the main thing are you prioritizing take a look at the last 24 hours and and then start stepping that thing out did i am i keeping the main thing the main thing you know when, when i look at order in my life am i putting god first then me if i'm a wife or a husband am i am i aligned adequately or are there other things you know in today's society we don't say other gods but i'm gonna call some of those other gods out because there are other gods it's shopping it's food it's hobbies it's habits all of those things, if you're putting them before him, if you're, and I'll tell you how you figure it out. Look at your bank account. If you're spending so much money on things and stuff, and that's what you live for, and then you look on the other side and you say, well, how much am I tithing? How much am I investing? How many seeds am I sowing into other things? You know, am I always saying, well, this is how I operate and how I move. And God is saying, I need you to get in order. I need you to make the right choice. Are you making not the right choice so you can pat yourself on the back and feel good for a day and say, well, I did the right thing today. No, he is saying you got to do the right thing daily. You have to be able to say, you know what? I know what God is asking me to do. I believe that no matter what I feel like in my flesh right here, right now, this thing makes me happy. God is saying, I am the ultimate happiness. Your happiness comes from me. You're not seeking your peace and your wisdom and all of that from anybody else and anything else. So if you're getting it from somewhere else, and I've been guilty of that, you know, I had tunnel vision on for a while about some things that I was looking at and I was like, okay, I'm going to get it and I'm going to do it. And it's like, okay, I, I need to make this money. I need to do this. I need to do that. And you forget the things that are important. And God is saying, hey, 
What about me? And you're like, okay, Lord, I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna also pay my tithes. So I know you want me to make my money. And he was like, I, I, I got all the money. I got all of everything. So if I needed you to make more money, have more money or anything, I'll give it to you. But first you got to get in alignment with me. So family, are you making the right choices? Are you, ooh, Dr. Abigail, you better say it. Look at your bank bank account and that calendar. It'll let you know your priorities. Over the last seven days, where has your time been spent? What are you doing? Are you meditating? Are you worshiping? Are you spending time with your family? Are you spending time with God? Where are you? What are you doing? You know, some of us, we spend, we go to work and we spend hours at work, but how much time are you sowing into where you are? What else are you doing? How much time are you giving him? I know I could go out on that tangent for a minute because I've been there before. I had things that were, you know, right here and we can't say, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna do better. You gotta do better now because- Tomorrow isn't promised. I was listening to that song and you know, it's like tomorrow, you know, what about today? What about being able to start right now? And I can think of some examples of people who were tested um, in the Bible. You know, Jesus was hungry, thirsty after his um, retreat out in the desert. And of course the enemy came and he tried to tempt him just like we get tempted with all this stuff. Some of the stuff is shiny stuff and I want it and I want to do it and I want to be. Sometimes it's being in situations where we feel like we want people to acknowledge us and encourage us. I need that to feel whole. But Jesus was like, mm -mm. nope, 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 nope. Jesus's responses to the devil were his weapons. He was able to call that thing out and say, uh-uh, you're not going to have your way. No, who are you? I don't have to prove anything to you. I think about Daniel. Daniel chose God over in his faith over any false gods. So again, what is that false god? Is it a car? Is it a hobby? Is it a habit? What is it? What are those things that you are putting before him? Because guess what? God is so awesome that he will allow us for a while, he'll, for a long time. He'll let us have our way, live our best life. And then he will bring that thing to an abrupt halt. And you'll be like, well, wait, what happened? Why did it happen this way? And he's like, well, remember when um, Dr. K spoke that message? And that was a warning. Remember when you heard that song on the radio? That was a warning. And remember when your bank account was looking funny? That was a warning. And remember when your back was hurting? That was a warning. And remember when the kids weren't coming around no more? That was a warning. And remember when this happened? you like, God, well, I ain't see them as warnings because I thought everything was okay. No, you were putting other things before me. You chose, you made those decisions in your mind and with your actions to do other things. You chose the other way, not my way. So, and I allowed you to do it for so long because guess what? I love you, but now it has to stop. And you're looking and it's like, well, who else? What other examples? Well, what about those Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They refused the king's command to worship golden images and family. I know when we're in it, sometimes we have blinders and we can't see. And it looks like, well, I'm just doing what makes me happy. Everybody else is doing what makes me happy. And God is saying, when you come before me, I ain't talking about what nobody else did, but you. When we go back and we survey, just like Dr. Abigail said, when I look at your bank account, when I look at your calendar and see what it is that you've been doing, that's the conversation that you're going to have to have with God, not me. Again, I'm just saying, let's reflect. Don't hate the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just sharing. You know, I can even think about situations that I was in. One situation and one example that resonated with me this morning, you know, I was a special ed director. That was my dream career. Um, I was doing, I was, I did, very, I was good at it, really good at it. But um, on the outside to the average person looking, they're like, gosh, she does it so effortlessly, but it was breaking me down on the inside. I was not a happy person when I came home. I wasn't a happy wife. I wasn't a happy mother, sister, friend. And, you know, um, the people around me would be like, oh my goodness, I can't wait for you to find another job. And, you know, I was praying about it. And my through my husband, you know, God was like, my husband said, baby, leave. We good. I'm going to, I got us. We'll be okay. And I just couldn't fathom it in my mind. But I woke up every day and my body was shutting down. I would be exhausted. I would be tired. I would still be trying to manipulate 
manipulate and do not manipulate in a bad way trying to organize and handle everything it was almost like a a puppeteer I'm trying to do all these different things and it was like no you don't have to and I believe my husband told me I want to say two years, two to three years prior to me actually leaving. And when I left, he was like, wait a minute, you leaving? Yeah, I, I left. But of course, I found another job, but it was a pay cut. And that's how God worked that thing out. When I tell you, I was like, Lord, I don't know how this is going to happen. And he was like, I told you, you can leave. It's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about having a job that pays you six figures. I got you. Don't worry about it. And family, when I took that other position, because that thing lined right up. When I tell you everything lined up in that year, I left the job, bought a new house, left the job one day. We got a new house the next day. We got married the end of that month, and everything just began to fold and, and just go into action. And I I remember getting my first check for the new job and I was like, wait a minute, this check is the same as the check when I was making six figures. Like, how you did that? And God was like, because we had already structured something. See, what I didn't realize is I had so much money going into investments and other things that I was already living off of the lesser salary. And with my husband, you know, everything just worked out. So I had literally everything that I needed. And when I got that first check, I sat with my husband. I'm like, baby, how did that? I don't understand. And when God was like, because you were already, I was positioning you. When you were doing X, Y, and Z, that was me positioning you to be able to live this way. But family, when I tell you within a few months of even taking a significant, it was a $40,000 pay cut. I'm gonna be honest. When I took that pay cut, he gave me double for my trouble. When I tell you we, we, we got more and on the next year's tax return, when I look, I, I got, I made way more than I was making in this job. And it was like, oh my God, and almost effortlessly. So when I tell you that sometimes making the right choice, it not sometimes making the right choice when you're supposed to make the right choice, it makes it look different because it's either going to be as me and my sister talked about, it's going to be his way or the hard way. And for a little while, I went the hard way because two years prior, I could have made the decision when he presented it to me through my husband and I would have been off on my merry way. And once I walked out of it, it was such a relief not to have that stress, that pressure. I didn't have it anymore. It looked different. I felt different. You know, my relationships began to flourish and things started looking different. But you know what I did? When he released me from that thing, I, I wish I could say, okay, I, I followed his all of his commands and did everything the right way. I didn't. I found another thing to focus my time and attention on because I still was running for that thing. And he was like, you know what? I'm gonna let you have it for a minute, but then I'm gonna give it. To, I'm gonna make you stop. And and you know, I had to stop once again. That's why I say God is so awesome. He knows who we are and what we are. He extends His grace and mercy. So I wanted a yes. I had to get out of my own way, Yolanda. I I needed to say it because I don't ever want you guys to feel like, okay, she talking and she's saying all of this stuff that she doing and it's all perfect. No, I struggle too. No, I have situations where I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, it's hard, it's tough. But in this season of my life, I've learned that that battle as me and my sister Avril talked about, it's not mine. It's his. So what I can do is I can get my little self in position. Position means in my closet because I'm not trying to use my mouth to fight battles with anybody. I'm not physically fighting battles. I get in my closet. I get on my knees and I my knees might be all messed up because I'm praying. I'm giving it to God. I get still when he asks me to and I stop. I am learning to be obedient, to trust him, to be obedient and to have faith because I want nothing more than to be in alignment with what he has for us. That's it. I don't want anything else. And I know when I do that, I've seen him over and over again. He has provided, he's opened windows and the blessings just come. And I'll give you another example. You know, my husband and I, you guys notice we have really been um, 
purposeful and intentional about promoting our real estate business. And we have multiple businesses. We got the Planet Smoothie here in McDonough. We are executive directors with the um, multi-level marketing business, business and we do well with that. I'm still in education. You know, we have a lot going on, but we've been intentional about our real estate business because God has shown us that's where we're going to really be able to come together as a true team and be able to bless some people. I don't know exactly how, I, I don't see the step by step, but I see the end because he's already shown us what it's going to look like. So when it, it when we talk about having that antidote, you know what? He's already given it to us. So I am intentional about that. And when I say we've written down our goals together, we talk about it. I am the more uh, write down, organized person. My husband is a freer spirit, but that's what makes us come so um, that's what makes us gel together. And, you know, I said to him um, one day, I was like, baby, every day we're going to get a new client. You know, God is going to work this thing out. And family, when I tell you, I, I'm, I'm answering my phone and clients are coming and I'm like, okay, we are, we have our buyers. Now we're about to shift and work and focus on working with sellers. So, you know, it's just so many things when you do it the way God asks you to do it and the way he purposes it everything begins to fall in place. I promise you I'm a witness. Now, sometimes we try to fight it because you guys don't know. I've had my real estate license for a while, for a while. But you know, when God said, be still and in alignment, this is a, a family thing. This is going to be a legacy thing. This is about us building so that we can help our family to be able to see what home ownership is. Because how I'm, how I'm going to have a business? I heard somebody say, how are you going to have a business? T.D. Jake said, how are you going to have a business before you own your home? Come on now. You know, it's time for us to do some things. It's time for us to get ourselves in order. And we will be able to be that plug to be able to help some people. We'll be able to help people get their finances together because some people don't even know, how do I get my credit together? What do I do? And we make those bad choices. But today, family, I got the antidote to temptation. I have it, I have it, I have it. It's being able to be courageous, having that intestinal fortitude to make the right decisions and to say no and defeat the enemy with God's word because he tells us what he's going to do for us. He shows us over and over. And again, that's the ultimate weapon to be able to pick his word up and be able to say, uh-uh, say, and you can't have your way up in here because God has already told me in Jeremiah 29 and 11 for the plans that he has for me are to prosper not to hurt me, but for hope in the future. He's going to help me and my family, not just me and Frank right here, right now, but the legacy that we're going to leave, you know, being able to do some great things, being able to touch some people. So you know what, family, this is our time. This is our season for us to be able to do what we need to do. We got the antidote. And I had to even look that word up. It's like antidote. What is that? Given to counteract a poison. It's so much poison out here. It's so many competing interests that we have. If it's not about him, then it ain't what we need to be, what, what we need to be doing. If it doesn't align to his will, then it's the wrong choice for us to make. But he does give us the ability to make the choice. So when you're choosing, when you're reflecting today, I want you to look back. I want you to look back over the last seven days. Look at where you've been spending your time. Look at what you've been doing. Have you been keeping the main thing the main thing? You have the antidote. You have it. We have it right here. We, we can pull it up on our phone. We can, um, we can have our paper Bibles. We got everything we need. His word. When you immerse yourself in it, it starts to look different. I remember hearing on one of my, um, he, he's my son through my, my uh, he's my son through my son through football, DeAndre Walker. He played professional football. He played at UGA. You know, we were talking and he said, um, you know, Mo, when I opened up my Bible, I'm talking about 24 years old. He was like, when I opened up my Bible, everything made sense. He was like, God just laid it out. That thing touched my soul in a different way. He was like, I, I had the roadmap. He said, that's when I saw what was important. You know, when we think, oh, we see these people, public figures on TV and doing and being, guess what? He was like, nothing is more important than God's word and what he has for me. So are you keeping the main thing the main thing you got the antidote you have it it's right here you got it you have the antidote you have everything that you need 
resist the temptation, have the courage and strength to say no, stop putting other things before him. And you might say, well, I don't have any idols. There's nothing that I'm praying on. There's nothing that I'm looking at. Ladies, it can be, and ladies and men, it can be shopping, buying stuff. Do you need it? It can be where you're spending your time. It can be, you know, are you giving him his time? Not a quick prayer, not a, not um, Sunday morning for an hour or whatever. Are you giving him his time? Because all time is his. So we have what we need. Amen, amen. So as I wrap up, we're at the top of the hour. I wanted you guys to, um, I started with checking out my, um, my gear. My sister Tiffany um, has started her own custom t-shirt um, company. And this is one of her designs. I wore another one last Friday. It was um, Blacknificent with the gold drip. So this is um, um, unapologetically black. If you don't have your Black History t-shirts, go ahead. I see Tiffany has dropped her information here so you can go ahead and support her. I have it in long sleeve because I knew I was going to be cold down here this morning. Um, but um, it comes short sleeve. But if you want long sleeve, I know um, she, you can talk to her about that. It'll be an additional um, cost. But guys, I love it. I love supporting um, my sister. I'll be supporting some other small black businesses as well as I always do because I want to share. You know, when we launched Exposed, I got so much love and I still get love. Now it's on Amazon and, you know, people are like, well, what about Freedom by Design? Freedom by Design t-shirts are still being printed if you want it. But in this season, God is telling me, you know what? This platform is a shared platform. So I have to share everybody. Not, it's not about me. It's about him getting the glory. So we have to identify and make the right choices. Yes. Thank you so much, Nora. Yes, Tiffany, it is time. It is time. So I'm excited, guys. Remember, the antidote to temptation is having the courage to make the right decision, his decision, and coming at the enemy with God's word. You cannot come at the enemy with God's word if you don't know it. What are you putting before him? What are you doing? It's Freedom Friday. So on Freedom Friday, I promise you, I'm trying to um, share. I'm like, Lord, give me a word so we can set the people free. Because freedom only comes through him. It's not through a job. It's not through a relationship. It's not through money. It's not through stuff. It's not through habits, hobbies. That ain't freedom. That you'll always run and chase that void like a high. And you'll never get high enough. It'll you'll never. It'll be oh well next time, and you'll just be out there. And you'll be running. You'll be like God. I'm trying. I'm trying to work at it. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to do better, and it's not working. And God is saying, "Cause I'm waiting on you to try me." That's it. That's the antidote. I love you, family. God bless you. Have a fantastic Friday, and I look forward to seeing you on Monday again. Tiffany Custom Tees. Follow her on Instagram too. Tiffany underscore custom underscore tees. Bye-bye.